Hello and welcome everyone who is joining us live today. I'm Scott Feldstein with Grand Care Systems, and I'm so glad that you decided to join us today. I am joined also by Grand Care CEO and co-founder, Laura Mitchell. Hi, everybody. And today we're going to be talking about how Grand Care is used um, to support independence for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. So if that's what you're here for, you're in the right place. Um, <clears throat> before we get started on that, though, I thought it, we should probably explain really briefly uh, what Grand Care is and who we are. Um, so Grand Care has uh, been around for 16 years, uh, so we're not new. And our platform is originally designed to uh, help seniors to age in place in private homes. And we've always had customers in the disability space. There were people who looked at the platform and thought that that'd be pretty helpful for my brother. Uh, or some other family member. Uh, so those people have always been there. But for the past, as it was probably about three years ago, we were approached by a group in Cincinnati who wanted to use technology to reinvent their service delivery model for a whole variety of reasons that you're probably familiar with, um, one of which is uh, it's really, really hard to get uh, staff. And also, it's just uh, it's just too expensive to provide the services that all the people that uh, to all the people that need it. And so they were looking for technology to help them overcome these things. Um, and they they found us. They found Grand Care, and they asked us if we would help them do this. And we said yes. And since that time, we've uh, been having our partners in this space help us shape the Grand Care platform into something that's really, really specifically designed uh, to help this population uh, be safe and independent and live exactly how they want to live. Um, am I forgetting anything, Laura, that we wanted to say about that? No, this is absolutely, um, you know, we actually had a, a great entrance into the disability market in the last couple of years. And it's been we originally designed uh, with the idea of, of serving the aging population. But in the past couple of years, we are approached, we've always had a disability uh, audience, but we were approached by uh, some folks that wanted us to kind of build out the services in the disability space. And the reason why it's so interesting to us is in the aging population, it's sort of been a struggle because a lot of folks that may require some sort of support and services are, are feeling like they're kind of losing some sort of independence. Whereas in the age, in the disability population, we're sort of providing a newfound in independence and empowering individuals to engage in their own independent lives and, and to be able to help themselves to do things better and, and manage their daily tasks. So it's just really been an exciting marketplace for us. It's, it's a lot, uh, clear uh, reimbursement strategies and eligibility. Uh, so it's just a really exciting marketplace for us to be involved in now. And it's uh, the, the stories are just yeah, heartwarming that we hear. Yeah, really, really inspirational. I'm hoping we can share a little bit of that with you uh, today. Um, <clears throat> so um, before we get into all the features that I want to talk about today, um, I want to say something about the Grand Care device itself, because I think it's important to understand that Grand Care is not a tablet. This is not a mobile device that you carry around room to room. Uh, it's, um, it's a large 17 and a half inch diagonal touchscreen. It's plugged into the wall and it's a stationary appliance uh, in your residence. And we'll talk a little bit more about that too in a minute. Uh, and we do this for a whole variety of reasons. Um, because we don't want grand care, your grand care to run out of battery. We don't want it to get lost under the couch cushion uh, and so on. It's always got to be in the same place so you can rely on it. And just to add on to that is that was a very intentional uh, strategy for grand care. Um, we thought about being a, a portable tablet and things like that, but really the intentional strategy was for the appliance to always be, uh, have a home, always be where it is so that people knew exactly where to go, where to find it, always on, always providing supports, always listening to various sensors throughout the home. 
And so it was just always functioning, just like your microwave and your stove would always be in the same place. We really wanted the Grand Care to have a home, be usable, not be dropped, not run out of batteries, and always be very easy to see visually and, and hear. Yeah, and to have nice big buttons, big targets to touch uh, as well. So we're going to talk about not everything that Grand Care does, uh, but we're going to focus mainly on the features that uh, our disability support uh, organizations are using, the features that they use the most um, to do remote supports uh, for people in this space. And so you can see that these are the things that we're going to talk about on-demand video for things like um, like, uh, you know, recipes and exercise routines and other health-related educations. If somebody's managing a chronic health condition at home, you might want to have them uh, have video that they can watch anytime on Grand Care to help them understand how to take better care of themselves. Of course, um, Grand Care does remote supports through video visits. Uh, so your support people can video into the Grand Care exactly where uh, and when that support is needed, uh, which of course, um, in many cases can um, replace having somebody uh, in that in that residence um, overnight and at other times too. Of course, we do activity monitoring with wireless motion and door sensors. And we'll be talking about that because that's a critical part of how these organizations are using Grand Care. And um, e perhaps even more important is the cognitive assist. The assistive technology that Grand Care provides is a cognitive assist. And you'll see exactly how we're using that uh, in this space. And uh, it's really pretty exciting. Speaking of that, the cognitive assist, there are new things to talk about in that area. And so with that, we're, we're going to get into this. Um, how can you take your Grand Care reminders into all the rooms of your house. How does that work? Uh, and what if you are supporting multiple people in the same house? How does that work? So we're gonna get into all of that stuff in just a little bit. First, on-demand video. You can use um, this, like I said, for educational purposes. It can even be for entertainment purposes if you want. The idea here is that you would place a video uh, under a button that someone can touch on the touch screen and watch it on demand at any time. For example, if you have grand care in the kitchen and many people do, one of the things that you might put there is a curated list of recipes for people to make, right? That's really, really helpful to have in the kitchen for this purpose. Also, you might want to distribute uh, fitness information for the people that you're supporting and so that they can watch these exercises and do their workouts anytime they want to. And that might, you might put that in a grand care um, in the living room, in a bedroom, someplace like that where people can are going to want to do their workout. And, and basically what Scott is showing you is some examples of content that can be on the Grand Care system. There can be any content on there from fitness videos. We have a Grand Care personal trainer that we've hired to have some basic videos on there. But any YouTube video can be placed on the Grand Care system, whether it is a cooking video, a nutritional habits video. It could be a video showing them how to do a new task or activity. It could be a video of wrestling. It could be a video of... Uh, of one of their favorite shows on YouTube. So any of those things can be remotely added by caregivers or your professional caregiving organization. And it can either be globally added to every single one of your clients or just to a select number or a family member can add a specific video for an individual. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is very all about <clears throat> customized content uh, for, for your clients. Yeah, thanks, Laura. And I meant to mention too that um, these videos that you see here, these are all YouTube videos. So almost anything that you find on YouTube can be made into a button on your Grand Care touchscreen to be watched anytime on demand. Uh, many of our customers make their own videos, however, like we made this video of these exercises. We hired a personal trainer to do these exercises, to do these workouts, and we um, now supply them to any of our customers who want them. Of course, we're going to be talking about activity monitoring. Uh, this is a really critical part of 
being able to do remote supports? How do you know when the people that you're supporting need that in-person support? How do you know that? Well, one of the ways is you can use activity monitoring sensors like these motion sensors that you see here. And so if you use these all throughout the house, then your support staff can know when my feet hit the floor, when I'm out of bed at night, they can know that I'm in the hallway. They can know that I'm in the kitchen. And then maybe at that time, if I'm in the kitchen at two o'clock in the morning, maybe that's a good time to have a video call right to the kitchen grand care and say, hey, Scott, what are you doing up at this hour? Maybe you should go back to bed, right? Um, so you can provide that face-to-face -face support that quickly, right where it's needed. Um, and that's that's a, an efficiency that you can't do um, without this kind of technology. And let me just add in as well, Scott, that if you have any questions and you're listening to us, I think we have over 90 viewers right now across uh, different social media platforms. If you have any questions at all, um, we have staff on hand to answer in chat. So please feel free to ask questions as you have them and we'll have, we'll try to get them answered. Otherwise we are going to take questions at the end as well. Yes. Thanks. Um, and so here's an example of, of, of doing that video visit on Grand Care. Um, that's um, me calling uh, Hans Cabrera here at Grand Care, who is amazing. Those of you that know him. <clears throat> now let's talk about the cognitive assists that I mentioned. This is a, a, another critical part of how grant care is used to promote independence. It starts with simple to-do reminders. Now this is a feature that we created for a friend with Alzheimer's disease many years ago. Hi from New York. Um, we created this for a friend with Alzheimer's disease because he wanted to map out his day with all the activities that he wanted to do and have his grant care remind him to do that thing at the right time. And also, then he could have a visual way to see what he'd already done that day and what was coming up later. And this was a way for him to orient himself as he went through his day to achieve all the things that he wanted to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then as soon as we released this feature, as often happens in the grand care world, we released this feature for people with dementia and Alzheimer's disease. And immediately our other customers decided they needed to use that too. <laughs> You know, so we, you never know who's going to use what for what, but uh, our disability customers jumped on this feature. And I think you can see um, really easily why. Uh, and it's a nice experience. It's, it can be a nicer experience to have grand care remind you it's time to take a shower rather than have your mom do that. Right. That's a very different experience. And it's just fundamentally more independent. And I mean, when you think about it, all of us have devices that are doing this every day for us. So I don't, yeah. it's really no different than my smartphone lets me know um, wh when it's time to get up in the morning. It lets me know when my calendar um, invitations are, uh, events are happening. It lets me know where I'm going, um, what I'm doing, everything about it. So it really is, Grand Care is designed to be an added support, an ancillary support in this way. Yeah. And you can see in the today button, we can have our to-do items and there's also our medication schedules, our calendar appointments uh, and so on. So grand care can remind you to take your medication when you're supposed to take it. And this is an example of a very specific notification a reminder to take a very specific medication. And we even show you a picture of what that medication looks like if you want that. And of course, what you do is you just touch the button to indicate that you've taken it, right? Uh, or maybe you don't do that. What if you don't do that? Maybe you refuse your meds today. I'm not taking that today. Or maybe you do nothing at all. But the point is that Grand Care can automatically reach out to the care team, to that support team, to let them know that this medication was not acknowledged as taken. And so that maybe that they'd have to um, check out why that is. Now, this is a different kind of reminder, an activity reminder. Um, and we were asked to do this because sometimes um, people need enumerated steps uh, to achieve a certain task. And so what happens with this reminder is it comes up at the right time that you're supposed to do this. And when you touch the screen, Grand Care reads aloud to you 
all of the steps uh, in, involved in this task. It reads them all aloud. And when it re reads the last step to you, it automatically plays a video for you to watch. And ideally, that video would be of you, the touchscreen user, performing that task successfully in your own place with your own things so that you always have that example in front of you, that successful example of doing that task. And of course, this can be anything you want, how to prepare a meal, how to prepare to leave the house in the morning, anything that has multiple steps that people will want that level of prompting for, you can have. Okay, so we talked about medication reminders. That's kind of a private thing. And so um, when grant care is used in a group home setting, and it increasingly is, um, each individual who lives in the house will have their own personal grand care touchscreen in their bedroom. And that grand care touchscreen will have a reminder like this. It will be very specific to them. It will call out the name of the medication as well. But what if you're not in your room? What if you're in the kitchen? What if you're in the family room? What if you're somewhere else in the residence? What then? Well, this is an example of <clears throat> maybe your grand care in the kitchen. Um, so it doesn't say, hey, Scott, it's time to take your lisinopril and, and you know tell everybody what my medications are and so on. It doesn't do that. Um, it just says, hey, Scott, there's something for you to look at on your personal touchscreen in your room, right? It's a much more discreet way to handle that reminder. And we think it's just more respectful and more private. If you want to tell your housemates or your guests what medication you're taking, go ahead. But grand care is never going to do that. And also, I should point out that this type of reminder that you see here in this public area grand care touchscreen, it can notify more than one resident at a time. So if Laura had a reminder as well, her name would appear down in that notification area also. Not only that, but if I have a reminder, uh, we can have Grand Care turn on a light to tell me that. If I'm uh, not near a touchscreen, Grand Care can turn on a light. And what we've found that our customers are doing is they're, if you have multiple people that are being supported in that residence, each of them might have a specific color of light just for them. So that when I see the orange light, I know I have a reminder. And Laura might see a blue light when she has a reminder, right? So we can do that throughout the residence as well. And that's really, really, it can be a really, really discreet way um, to, to um, notify somebody that they have a reminder that they need to attend to. And of course, you know, all of our clients might have a large eight and Eight by ten uh, portrait of me in their in their residence. Thank you. Yeah, Scott, that's required. That. Yeah, yeah. Everybody has that. <laughs> um, and so I I promised that we would be doing a deep dive, and this is kind of kind of deep. Like, how do you set up the relationship between right this grand care screen in my bedroom to this grand care screen screen in the kitchen? How do you establish that relationship between those? Well, you do it like this. I would, or, or I or a, um, a support person would go to the, my grand care um, on the secure grand care website, and then they would add peer grand care touchscreens so that these other grand care touchscreens can mirror, can echo those notifications in the way that you saw um, right here, right? And let's take an even closer look. You can now have if uh, rules like if any notification is shown on this screen, then also show a reminder on this other screen. Uh, and also, if a notification is shown on this screen, then turn on this light. And that is how that works. And it, it's just nice. So imagine in a group housing scenario, you may have four or five residents that are living together. Um, and then they've got several common areas, which you want to encourage them to go out to common areas, of course. But then they've got their own separate bedrooms and their bedrooms are where um, the touchscreens are going to be, you know, like a touchscreen like this behind me um, is going to be in their bedroom. 
and it'll be their personal assistant, right? It'll be a concierge service model for them. It'll be an access to their family, their friends, access to services, access to caregivers, a one-touch video chat option to the remote supports. It'll also be a cognitive assist reminding them of their daily tasks. They can check off things as they go along, um, medication reminders, things like that, as well as entertainment, games, trivia, fun things. So when they're in a public area, they'll still they won't have to keep going back to their room to check and see if they have a reminder the the idea is that in the public areas all the public screens are talking to their individual screens and saying mark has a reminder john has a reminder matthew has a reminder and then you know not only is it uh, private and hipaa compliant but it also doesn't remind the wrong person to do the wrong thing so it's letting you, them right. know whether it's through that reminder on the touchscreen itself, a visual reminder like your color is the blue light, yours is the red light, or um, audio reminders. Yeah, yeah. And not only that, if any notification is shown on my personal grand care, we can set up grand care to send me a text message about that. So I can even get that reminder even if I'm not home, if I have a mobile phone that I take with me. Right. Helpful, obviously, for daily medications or daily tasks. Yep. Um, so Grant Care is also a fully featured telehealth platform. Uh, and this is for people who are managing a chronic health condition at home. It's the people with diabetes. It's the people with CHF or whatever it is. We have a lot of um, customers in this space who are using thermometers. Um, simply because that may be the quickest way to know if someone is ill. And that's been a big deal uh, as we went through the worst of the pandemic, knock on wood, um, that um, everyone would be taking their temperature in the morning to see if anyone had an elevated temperature. And if they did, then the support team could be notified about that immediately by text message, by um, email, or by phone call, or any combination thereof. And it doesn't uh, and just actually, have to be the professional caregivers. It could also be familial caregivers. If a sure. parent wanted to know, you know, let's say they're managing diabetes or any sort of uh, chronic condition, you can actually manage it and be notified if specific things occur. Right. And here's kind of what that looks like. If you see on the right, we have these if-then statements about the various conditions that we want to be notified about. If the blood pressure is greater than this value, uh, then here's what I want you to do. Like I get a text message, Laura gets an email, somebody else gets a phone call. Um, and there's an, actually a new way now to be notified that uh, maybe you have not seen before if you're familiar with Grand Care. Well, you can see also here on the left how we track your medication adherence so that we can take a look at how often you're acknowledging your medication and when you're not doing that. And just so you know, you know, Grand Care is designed so that you don't have to be sitting there as a caregiver and staring at the custom dashboard or staring at the rule sets or staring at the uh, graphs. Of course, you have the ability to graph things out, uh, look at the uh, look at the readings, look at the motion graphs, look at all um, set up rules and all of that. But it's designed so that you can set up rule sets to be notified if something maybe seems amiss. Somebody didn't get out of bed. They didn't access the fridge at mealtime. They didn't leave. They didn't open the front door to leave for work at the right time. Um, any of those things, uh, you can be notified of any abnormalities. And again, you can actually set up global rules for the entire house or the entire community. And then you can set up individual rules based on that person's individual needs. So you might want to know if there's no motion for eight hours during the day for everyone, but you also might know for a specific person if they didn't get out of bed by this time. Or maybe it's a wanderer where you want to know if they got out of bed in the middle of the night. We've had tons of scenarios like that where uh, one specific scenario was a, a fellow was having trouble with, a, with getting up and sleepwalking and eating all the contents of the fridge. So what they did was they set up a parameter where when he got out of bed in the, in the middle of the night between, you know, 12 a.m. and 5 a.m., the remote caregiver would be alerted and that remote caregiver would actually drop into the grand care system in the kitchen. 
Yeah. And then that individual would be in the kitchen and that caregiver would say, hi, you know, it's, it's in the middle of the night, go back to bed. And, the, you know, either the individual would go back to bed or he would say, well, I'm hungry. And then she would, she or he would, would give some ideas for a healthy snack instead of eating all the contents in the fridge. So maybe a handful of almonds and some string cheese or whatever. And then that individual would go to back to bed. And there were some very simple ways to solve uh, some complicated problems. Yeah, and it's important to, in that particular scenario and in others like it, you have to realize that prior to using grand care in this way, they had to have a staff person in that residence overnight uh, to, to deal with that situation. Um, and now using grand care technology, you don't need to have that necessarily. I mentioned that there's a new way to be notified about something going on in the residence that you might need to look into. And this is pretty new. Um, so even if you're familiar with grand care, likely you've not seen this. This is called a managed alert. And what you do is when you make a notification rule for grand care, if Scott's up in the middle of the night in the kitchen, then what I want you to do is notify somebody, but you get to select a severity level. How important is that notification? If you select four, the highest level of severity, that becomes a managed alert. And what happens is when you, as a caregiver, log into the Grand Care website, um, Grand Care, the website will beep at you audibly, and it will show you that you have uh, alerts that need to be look, looked into. And here's a list of the ones that I had the other day. And when I drill down and click through on one of those alerts, I, I'm given the option to claim that alert. And if I claim that alert, it means that I am now responsible for seeing it through to a resolution. And I can add notes to this, uh, to this alert. I can, um, I can obviously resolve it when it is resolved and I can put all those, all that detailed information into this um, managed alert so that the care managers and other people can see that that, uh, that alert was dealt with by me and all the notes that I have about how I did that and so on. So Grand Care also does surveys. And we have some surveys that we've created um, that uh, you can use if you want to. This one's just about lifestyle and we have one about heart health, I think. And uh, But many of our customers want to ask their touchscreen users their own questions. And so we do customize that for you if that's what you want to do. This has been particularly useful uh, for engaging mood and um, figuring out if someone needs some extra support. So particularly yeah. during the pandemic, you know, how are you feeling today? Uh, a lot of our housing providers would utilize uh, three simple questions. You know, do you, does your head hurt? Do you have a fever? Um, do you have any sinus, uh, you know, any, any indications of COVID, right? Um, other ones would utilize it for member satisfaction, like how, are, how, how do you like the service? Is there anything we can improve? Um, but again, others would utilize it to say, you know, how are you feeling today on a scale of one to 10? How happy are you? Are, are you feeling better today than you were yesterday? Do you think tomorrow will be better? Just to figure out and gauge who might need a little extra support. And yeah, right. Sorry about the siren, the if you can hear that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and it's important to know, too, that um, we actually have, in addition to these buttons, we actually have frowny face to smiley face um, responses as well. Now, every grand care can receive messages to it, um, just like you see here. Uh, you can send a message to a single grand care unit, but we also have something called community messaging. And that way you can send a single message to a group of grand care touchscreens all at once. And that could mean a community could mean absolutely everyone that your organization supports, or it could be just the people that have diabetes, or it could be just the people that like professional wrestling or whatever it is that you can make a community just for them so that you can target them with a, a message that only they will be interested in. Of course, we also have the option to make an emergency message. And that's um, 
sometimes used when there is an emergency. And it it looks like this. It's very attention getting. That red background will flash at you uh, and it will make an emergency sound. And it's important to know that even if the volume on that Grand Care touchscreen has been turned all the way down, that emergency message will turn it all the way back up to 100% so that it can be heard. And then in addition to making that emergency sound, it will also read aloud to you that message. You know, I wasn't going to talk about this today, but I it was just earlier this week that I talked to um, a disability um, support uh, organization, and they were telling me that they intended to use this feature as a means to promote uh, more independence. And what this is, is it's a way for uh, touchscreen users to request things, services, things that they need. Um, if I need somebody to clean my kitchen on Friday afternoon, I can make that request right here. And all of these buttons, if you choose to have them at all, you can choose what they are. All of these button, button labels and logos are customizable by you. Um, so they can be anything that you want. They can be services that your organization provides directly, or maybe even a trusted third party that you've partnered with to provide that service, whatever it is. And I think the idea here, if I understood correctly, was that um, it would be a step forward to, to try and uh, teach people to request the things that they need here on the touchscreen uh, for some touchscreen users. So I included it today. Um, I'll leave it to others to tell me exactly how they're using this feature, but I do know that there's some interest in it for this particular population. Now, sometimes you're not doing remote support. Sometimes you may have an, an actual caregiver on site. And so while that's happening, if you have a support person who is on site in the residence at the touchscreen, what features do we offer to that person? Well, for starters, the, you would have this caregiving button. And when the caregiver touches this caregiving button, they're asked to identify themselves with a four digit pin. And once they do, they're greeted by name and they can clock in and they can clock out to document the fact that they were there in the residence at the touch screen. And what else they might do while they're here is they might wanna look at the care plan. What am I supposed to be doing? while I'm here in this residence? Well, I would look at the care plan and see the list of things that I might uh, have to do while I'm at, at this location. And there's a lot of flexibility in what these um, care services are. Some can be required, others can be optional. They can be things that have to happen at a certain time or not. They can be things that you just do once or things that you might have to do multiple times while you're there. And some of our home care organizations would even utilize this as a way while the caregiver is on the clock to provide some caregiver education. So if there was a new uh, bed transitioning uh, plan, they would have them watch uh, a video on, uh, you know, continuing education video right on the grand care system in the care plan. Yeah, exactly. The other thing that I might do as an on-site caregiver is take a look at the notes that have been left by previous um, support people that have been at this location. And of course, I could leave a note of my own. Those are accessible remotely. So if a family member is very engaged and interested, they can still be in the know, uh, in the loop by e either having those care notes emailed to them daily or they can actually log into their uh, to the online portal and they can see what the caregivers are doing with their loved one. And they can also uh, be engaged and maybe send a note back and ask questions. Yeah, that's that's really important to know that, too, because these um, when these notes are created, as soon as I make a new note and submit it, that note um, either can immediately go out to the entire care team. Or if you'd prefer, they can do a daily digest. You can get an email for just the summary of, of uh, the notes for that day, uh, whichever way you want. And it's important to also know that that, that care team uh, can, in many cases, should include family members who want to be notified about these things too. Now, 
one of the things that we did at Grand Care um, during the worst of the pandemic, when we were all at home, we knew that Grand Care users were better off than people that didn't have Grand Care because they at least had that really accessible video call technology with on a big screen and everything. Um, and remember, with Grand Care to do their video calls, there's no there's no usernames, there's no passwords, there's no addresses, there's none of that stuff. All you do is you touch the picture and the name of the person you want to talk to, and that's it. Uh, and with that kind of accessibility, that opens up those video visits to a lot more people. So we knew that they were maybe a little bit less lonely for that reason, but we also knew that they were still at home, stuck at home without enough to do. And we knew this because we were also stuck at home without enough to do. And so we decided to do something about it. And I just wanted to share that with you now because these features also have turned out to be very, very popular um, with our disability support uh, organizations. Now, the first thing we did is create something called a grab bag. And you can see that button there on the left. Now, I, I should point out that many of the buttons that we show you are optional. You can have them or not have them as, as you wish. Uh, and you can customize that for each individual too. So what happens when you touch the grab bag button is that it plays an, a random audio file for you. And as you can see, that could be a joke. It could be um, a fun fact or a famous quotation. And there are hundreds and hundreds of these so that it doesn't get boring. Um, and I know this because um, you may know that I recorded each and every one of these myself. So um, when you hear that joke, it's me telling you that joke. And they're not great jokes, but they're just as funny as you can imagine. No, they're they're terrible. They're awful. And um, but they are definitely family friendly. And there's lots of them. And there's lots of them. So Grant Care has always had games, uh, but now we have a bunch more. And for example, uh, we've for a long, long time, we've had solitaire. And this is still with some people, the most touched thing on Grand Care. People love to sit and play it. Now we have other games like this memory game that I like a lot. And the thing that I like the best, I think about it, aside from the fact that the photography is really, really gorgeous, is the fact that when you go to play this game, you're asked to select a difficulty level. And we think that's important because we want this game to be fun for everyone no matter what difficulty level that you like. Uh, so the other thing that we did when we were all stuck at home and bored is we decided um, to put live radio on Grand Care so you can listen to uh, radio live right through your Grand Care touchscreen like you see here. Uh, and when we rolled this out initially to a few hundred users here in the state of Wisconsin, the response was incredible, and we did not predict it at all. Touchscreen users called us. We got calls every day for a while, and the, and the calls were always the same. Can you please add my favorite radio station? Uh, and so we did. Now we have a bunch more. And uh, we rolled this out in other locations as well. One of the things I did not know is that, yeah, you can go to the radio station's website and stream their station, but if your IP address indicates that you're outside their range, they may not let you. So we have to do local stations uh, for people wherever they live. We did, um, in addition to live radio, we decided we'd put um, on-demand audio entertainment. And so we got some uh, audio, we got some, uh, sorry, radio shows that are not on the air anymore. You can't listen to them live anymore. And I was super excited when we got Car Talk because I'm that demographic, right? I spent many, many weekends listening to that show and laughing my head off. And now, of course, it's not on anymore. So what can you do? We got many, many episodes of this show that you can listen to on demand on Grand Care anytime you want. We also got even um, older classic radio shows that younger people might not even know about, like um, The Shadow and Dragnet and a bunch of really fun stuff like that that you can listen to anytime you want. In addition to that, we also uh, found some classic audiobooks that um, you can listen to chapter by chapter anytime you want. It's Anne of Green Gables. It's The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. 
It's the call of the wild. It's a Christmas carol. You can listen to them anytime. And I think that's that's everything that we wanted to talk about today. I'm sure that many of you have questions about some of the things that we showed and talked about, especially some of the new things. If you're already familiar with Grand Care, um, you want to probably reach out to us and find out more about those things, things like managed alerts, things like public area reminders that may be new to you as a Grand Care user. Um, although I know most people in attendance are not current Grand Care customers, but you should know too that we have these features. Uh, so if you'd like to find out more, please uh, reach out to us. Um, I'm scott at grandcare.com. You can reach out to me. You can reach out to the addresses and phone numbers that you see here. You can go to our website and chat us up on the website. Um, and uh, we look forward to hearing from all of you. Uh, okay, so I do actually have a number of questions here that are on the various social media platforms. Um, the first question that I yeah. see here is, um, can the survey be read aloud to non-reading clients? And the answer is yes. Uh, if they just touch the screen, it can read any of the the items to them. So they can they can have the survey read to them. Okay, and somebody's, Laura, asking, somebody's asking if it's also uh, appropriate for a single private resident or is it only in group homes? Yeah, it's actually great for um, a single person in a in a one bedroom apartment who needs this kind of support. Although I would recommend too, if you even if you have a single person living in that residence who needs this type of remote support, get more than one Grand Care touchscreen. Have one in that bedroom. Have one in that kitchen or that common area too, so that you can have the ability to. Um, not only receive those reminders all over the residence, but also for support staff. When you're doing remote support, you want to be able to do that video call right where that person is to provide the support exactly where they need it. We have another question. Is this being recorded and can we share this after? Yes, this is being recorded. It is streaming live right now on YouTube, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, and StreamYard. Uh, we also do have a recording of it that we can send to you after. We also do have an active Slack channel for all of our affiliates and clients where you can get direct access to our tech support team. You can have access to other affiliates where you can brainstorm, market, have ideas. Um, a lot of non-competitive affiliates are on there and share different rule sets that they use to solve some of their some of their issues that they're facing with residents. And also you can, we'll share all PR strategies, marketing materials for you to use. Okay. There's yeah. a question on training. Oh, Scott, why don't yeah. you talk about training? Um, yeah. There's a question on how, how, what it takes to uh, be able to install Grand Care and whether you need to have a professional install it. Yeah. Really good questions. Um, number one about training. Um, I've been with Grand Care for about eight years in sales, uh, but my background is um, is actually in e-learning. I spent a decade in e-learning before coming to Grand Care, and as a result, we have very comprehensive online training that you do on demand. Um, and usually, with our organizations, we just do a site license. So, if you have staff coming and going, you can get them trained up right away as soon as uh, as soon as they're on board. Um, with that. So, um, and that's kind of unique, a uh, unique thing that we have to offer too. And uh, what was the other question, Laura? Uh, how, technical oh, you need to be, the, how technical you need to be to be able right. to install. Sure, sure. So yeah, so we've designed uh, Grand Care to be really, really easy to use, obviously as a touchscreen user, but it's also we, important, we feel, to make it as easy as possible to implement as a support uh, professional or a family member even too. Um, and it's pretty, pretty easy. And we know this because during the pandemic, the demand for Grand Care increased dramatically. Uh, but at the same time, no one was allowed to go into anyone's home. So what do you do? So we, we were really put to the test when we landed hundreds and hundreds of Grand Care touchscreens on people's front porches. And these are non-technical people who had to set these up themselves. And of course we had instructions in the box. We had a phone, a phone number to call our tech support line. And many people did call, but a surprising number of people never called and they got their grand care up and online just by themselves, no problem. 
Uh, so that's pretty easy to do. Um, and that, that kind of answers one of the other questions was how technical does the person need to be to utilize the Grand Care system? And I think um, we have seen users from 20 to 95 utilize it. Well, actually past 100 because we had a client who was 101 utilizing yep. the system um, and she was hearing impaired. And so her family utilized the system because they could not call her. And they had previously to Grand Care been trying to get her a fax machine to be able to communicate with her. So it was a great way for her to communicate all the way to the end of her life. And they, nobody needs to be technical at all. And in fact, we used to say they just need to be able to read to utilize the system. But now that's not even a barrier anymore because there's, um, they can touch buttons and have it uh, be read aloud to them. Um, here's another question. Can you hide items on the home screen that may not be needed? Yeah, you definitely can. In fact, the six buttons that you see here are kind of a grand care default, uh, but you as a care provider can choose to have or not have any of these buttons or to have other ones that we offer too. So it's really up to you. And that's a good time also to say that we do branding on the Grand Care system. So you can actually have your logo on the Grand Care and have the buttons that you want. So you can decide globally for all of your clients that you want assessment, health, messages, uh, fitness or services or whatever you decide that you want to have. But also you can customize it per individual. So the the gist is that Grand Care is in incredibly customizable per individual and per group, and it's very easy to do it. It does not require a lot of technical experience or know-how. We have a lot of our a lot of our clients are just caregivers, professional caregivers or nursing staff who are using this for their clients, and they don't have an incredible breadth of technical experience, but they're able to easily use it. And we designed it with that in mind. Yeah, right. Are there other questions, Laura? Yep, there's actually a lot of other questions. Uh, da, 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 da. Do we have a call center? Yeah, yeah, we do. Um, and that's, um, it's uh, 9 until 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, weekdays, uh, central time. Yep. And that call center, just to verify, is not a crisis management call center. It is a customer support call center um, where you'll have the option to have your staff be able to call in our, our call support line so that we can give them technical support. Or there's additional options for you to have your clients themselves call in. And in fact, we created this call center during the pandemic uh, yeah. for a Medicare Advantage payer who wanted their clients their members to be able to call in for support and setting up the system for support and getting their family members involved. Because of course your the family can video chat in using the HIPAA compliant video chat, and then they can send messages. They can add personal photos and videos. So we actually developed that with that in mind. And so that is a possibility. What if I don't have internet? Well, yeah, Grand Care does require the internet um, at the residence for it to work. But if you can't get um, standard uh, residential internet service like you and I might have, uh, then if that's not available, then Grand Care can supply you with a mobile hotspot that attaches to the back of the touchscreen uh, that either uses AT&T or Verizon, whichever one gets better coverage in your area. Okay, and I've actually got gotten a number of questions on this one, um, which is a great question. Is it covered by Medicare? Um, so Grand Care has a lot of reimbursements under Medicaid right now. There are reimbursements under Medicare. Um, the short answer is yes-ish. Uh, a lot of telehealth and things like that, the process of monitoring the telehealth, the process of setting up the telehealth, the process of evaluating the telehealth readings are covered. The actual equipment itself is not covered yet, but that is absolutely happening right now um, with the Home Care Act and the WISH Act. Those reimbursements are coming. But right now in the disability market, we find that a lot of folks are getting coverage, uh, Medicaid yeah. coverage, as well as a number of uh, state grants and initiatives. So yeah. keep an eye out. That is, it is changing all the time uh, as far as coverage. 
Yeah, and we this will is a to keep you advised as we learn about new codes that are being covered. But a lot of new telehealth codes are are being covered. Yeah, yeah, and I wanted to add to that. Um, in our experience, if um, <clears throat> excuse me, I've never seen yet a state Medicaid waiver that will not pay for Grand Care. They, they will pay for things you're looking for are assistive technology and grand care is that. And if you're looking for remote support in that waiver, grand care provides that too. So um, the chances are, and every state does their um, Medicaid a little differently, as you know, uh, but what we have found is that they all provide for those. Okay. Here's a good question. How do we deal with overbearing parents? So um, this is a great question. And this is something that obviously is an issue in both the aging and, um, yeah. and disability population. But a lot of times uh, in the disability world, somebody may be venturing on their own and, and the parents may be a little too aggressively trying to be involved. Grand Care actually offers a great opportunity for them to unobtrusively be involved. They still get to be in the loop. They still get to know what's happening, but they're not going to be calling their son or daughter every single moment of the day. They can see that activities are happening. They can see that daughter or son checked off that they've taken their medications. They've, yep. they've gone through their checklist and how to get ready for work. They've gone through the checklist of their daily tasks. They can also see that they, you know, opened the door and left and went and went to the office. So there's all sorts of ways that this person, that the family can still be involved without being a nuisance um, and allowing and empowering that individual to be more independent and be more free on their own. So it is a great way. It is a great tool for someone who is very involved in their child's life to be involved. And there are options where a family member a parent, a guardian could be given granted access to specific parts of the system. For example, you may allow a sibling to be able to add pictures and messages and video chat with the system, but you don't want them to see the health readings. That is okay. And you can designate different levels of access for users. So caregivers can log in and see different things depending on their access and their authority levels. Right. Well, we're kind of coming back to the top of the hour. Um, yeah, we've got, yeah. And, and, and again, I've got a number of questions that we haven't answered, but please uh, reach out to us, sales or info at grandcare.com. If you go to our website, grandcare.com, we also have a live chat that is available from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Central Time, and where one of our agents will be available to answer your questions. It's not a bot, it's really us. And so we can answer your questions in real time. Again, we have that Slack channel that you're welcome to join our workspace and ask questions real time as well. Um, just email us info at grandcare.com to request an invitation to our Slack channel. And again, this the special of the two months free of Grand Care is going on until April 15th. So if you're interested in learning more, if you want us to do a, a private demo for your organization, if you want to show us how we can, if you want us to show you how to customize it for your organization, if you have specific problems you're trying to solve, let us help you. We know uh, we've heard of many different things in the last 16 years, very creative ways to solve issues that, you know, may seem unsolvable. So how do we deal with people that are wandering at night? How do we deal with somebody who isn't going to bed? How do we deal with somebody that's not taking medications? How do we deal with somebody with mobility concerns? How do we deal with somebody that is having uh, daily uh, needs, daily assistive moment to moment task reminders? Um, so we've dealt with all of those things. So we're happy to help you um, solve this issue. And of course, we have seen some great benefits and outcomes from the grand care system. We've one of our clients in Ohio has shown that they were able to reduce using technology assists, reduce staffing from one to six to one to 20. And in several scenarios, they were actually able to eliminate the need for an on-site staff member at all. And they would just have their remote support center uh, be able to service all of the homes. So we've seen some great results and uh, we would love to share more with you. So again, reach out to us anytime and this will be recorded. Please feel free to 
stick around and ask questions. We will have agents available to answer questions. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us live today. Uh, and if <clears throat> if you're watching this in the future, then I don't know, leave a hot stock tip in the comments below. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs>